Well, I'm here near Fresno, California to do something I've never done before. Drive an electric tractor. That absence of sound you can hear is just the electric motors purring. There's nothing under that hood except five big batteries. Here outside Fresno, California, in this vineyard, John Deere is holding an event to introduce its prototype line of fully battery electric tractors. Earlier on in the day, we had to fight some severe heavy rainstorms pounding down on us, and of course, frequent overflights by uh, fighter jets from a, near, a nearby airbase kind of making a lot of noise but we're out here in this vineyard taking a look at these new tractors what they're capable of and how they're designed they're not yet ready for production but Deere thinks the prototype that we're showing here that they're showing here will be very similar to the production tractors eventually to come by 2026 yeah I'm Julian Novelli I'm the director of high value crop and small acre crops for John Deere that also includes the electrification effort and that's what we're really seeing Deere focus on right now, isn't it? The, the, the high value crops with these particular models in the electrification right now. So tell me about why Deere's focused on sort of that element. Yeah, so that's been really driven by customers and the demand that they had for specific application when there was efficiencies to be gained, you know, with an electric tractor over a diesel and having the ability to decouple traction from PTO, from hydraulics, giving them more control, more efficiency and more accuracy in what they were doing. And certainly on top of that, you know, the sustainability aspect was also important to, to customers. So the fact that this is a zero emission tractor uh, was cherry on, on, on the cake, if you will. Now, you mentioned that these are about 130 horsepower and that's kind of going to be about the sweet spot right now for battery electric technology as it stands. Yeah, so we're battery, and battery technology is evolving very quickly, as you know, but today, yeah, anything I would say less than 150 horse is a good candidate for electrification, be it a tractor or a piece of construction equipment uh, or a piece of lawn equipment, which we do all three, you know, at John Deere. Um, this particular model equivalent is, yeah, about 130, whether it's in a vineyard, in an orchard, or in a dairy livestock. You know, what do these customers need? What do they want? How do we deliver a solution that they're looking for, knowing that it may be a different customer each time we talk to? It may be a vineyard customer that's looking for a narrow tractor like this one. It may be an orchard customer that's looking for a tractor that's a little bit lower profile and able to navigate the orchards like that one. Or it may be a dairy customer that's looking for a tractor to go into the barn, to do feeding, to do feed push-up, to do all the jobs that we see in the dairy. Which might be a tractor that was like this. The tractors, the way they're looked, the way they're designed are really driven by what does the customer need at the end of the day. So these tractors would be really close to our 5ML series, these specialty tractors right here. While we have a standard tractor right here, right now these tractors we have had roughly comparable to a 130 horsepower diesel tractor. On the side of the tractor down here is where the charging port is behind this lock panel. There's a number of different uh, charger capacities that Deere's going to be able to provide, uh, everything from a cap something capable of an overnight charge to something that's able to take a uh, tractor battery from 20 to 80 percent capacity in 0.8 of an hour. But that'll require three-phase power on, on your farm in order to get that infrastructure set up to do that. And that's an important part of what Deere is saying here. Getting an electric tractor is more than just going to the dealership and bringing home a new model. You're gonna to have to set up for it. It's gonna require infrastructure on the farm, charging capacity. You're gonna need to make sure that you can get the kind of power at your farm that you're gonna to need to keep these things charged and ready. There's a number of different uh, options though. Uh, different levels of chargers and even uh, a converter that will plug into the welder plug in your farm shop straight into here and you can charge it that way. We have our powertrain, our electrical powertrain that's really compact in there. 
and we have five battery packs on this tractor. So we actually have one in the base of the chassis, we have three under the hood, and on the right hand side there'll be a fifth battery. So part of our concept on modularity is really, really um, common with automotive that that common skateboard allows us to put different size tires on, different widths of axles, different cabs on, and one of the best parts about having five individual battery packs is it allows you to size the power on the tractor for what a customer needs. If a customer doesn't need five battery packs, we can take one off. You could take three off, you could take two off. Controls are pretty basic. This lever here, which looks like a shuttle shift lever, really basically is. Press it uh, ahead to go forward, reverse to go back. Down there, that orange pedal is the equivalent of a throttle. Step on it harder to go faster. It's pretty much just like driving an electric car or an automatic transmission car. One of the great things as we talk about battery electric vehicles is what does that unlock for us? It allows more control of things, it allows more precision of things. So as we talk about controls, you're going to see electronic controls inside the cab. That's how we control our hydraulics, it's how we control our traction system, it's how you control steering, it's how you control braking. So this has been one of our paths on how we rapidly not just been able to control with precise control on these vehicles to allow them to be autonomy capable from day one as well. Now we're seeing this tractor behind us especially is fitted for autonomous operation. How, how critical will that be in, in the evolution of these uh, battery electric uh, models? Yeah, so what's one thing that's really neat about electric vehicles is they fundamentally uh, designed for autonomy, right? Designed ready for autonomy, right? And, and the reason why that is, is we having the ability to control every single function on a tractor with an e-motor. Um, allows you to, through software updates, make the tractor do absolutely, you know, any operation that you want it to do, you know, as precisely as you as you can. So as you look at the labor challenges that we are facing in our industry, right, where a lot of the work just frankly cannot be done in the amount of time that you have to do, you're going to have to rely on technology to get those jobs accomplished, right? And so having a path to autonomy there is really important, not just on electric, right? We're going to offer those same packs on diesel as well, um, and we're going to have uh, offer you know retrofit options. But the nice thing about autonomy, is, about electric vehicles, is that any autonomy jobs in the future will be able to be controlled really efficiently with it because it was work to do so. Right. So what's it like to drive an electric tractor? Well, it's quiet for one. cab is pretty familiar. Anybody with a John Deere will recognize the control arrangements in this cab. At least how similar they are at the moment. This is a prototype vehicle and will be a little different when it hits production. Cruise control available here. One button activates cruise control. It's very quiet. <laughs>